morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. Once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation. No, we're not talking innovation. That's right, folks. We are no longer talking innovation. We're talking AI startups and the future. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell as you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note in Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Why the change, you say? Well, I've been finding over the last little while that pretty much all we ever talk about is AI. Is AI. And I have a newsletter from my ID8 and Execute group where I send out a newsletter to about 9,000 people every week. And in this newsletter that I send out to about 9,000 people every week, I have links to hot items that this group might be interested in. And this group is typically corporate innovators, startup founders, people who are interested in the future. So people who I've talked to before in the past, and I usually put in news items on innovation startups in the future. So I have an agent which goes out there and looks for innovation news, AI news, startup news, future news, etc., etc., etc. And this is when it hit me really hard. It hit me really hard when I looked at the result of the innovation news. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. There's literally nothing going on in the innovation space. And I've been toying with this for the longest time. I've been playing with this for the longest time. I've been not wanting to let go of innovation for the longest time. Even though people have said to me, innovation is done. Innovation is over. Innovation is finished. As a matter of fact, let me get rid of this. This was a book I wrote on innovation. Innovation Mastery. Definitive guide to entering your ultimate innovation career. I'm getting rid of it. It's gone, my friends. I'm kicking innovation to the curb. That's right, folks. Innovation is dead, as far as I'm concerned. So what are we going to replace it with? We're going to replace it with AI and startups and the future. That's right. AI is now more interesting than innovation. Way more interesting. Even though innovation is part of AI, AI is way more interesting. So you know what? We're going to talk about AI. We've been talking about AI for the longest time. So now I am officially pivoting the show to AI startups and the future. That's right, folks. Innovation has been kicked to the curb. So let's talk about AI. Over the last little while, tons of things have happened with AI. Tons of things. And one of the most interesting things that have occurred is where Elon Musk wants to take AI. And he's teased a bunch of times talking about something like truth AI or AI that is not woke, AI that is that is maximally curious. Now I love that term, maximally curious. Because what maximally curious says to me is that that's what we should be like. We human beings should be maximally curious. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what is maximally curious? Well, I'll tell you what maximally curious is. It's the same thing as I talk about with the do-its and the should-wes, right? Maximally curious AI is AI that will not say no to anything. It's kind of like say yes to everything. Investigate every possible route to the solution of your problem, even if it's not politically correct, even if it's not woke, even if it's not part of the standard set of things that we're all allowed to do. Maximally curious AI should be the same as maximally curious humanity. We should all be investigating every possible route to the solution to a problem instead of just the ones inside the box which inside the woke box, inside the box that we're all allowed to walk around in. Maximally curious, not curious within the box, maximally curious. Now, some people are worried. They're worried that maximally curious AI 
will lead to the end of the world. Then again, these people are worried that anything will lead to the end of the world. Everything will lead to the end of the world. But if you ask me, maximally curious AI lines up perfectly with my discussion of the do-its versus the should-we's. Maximally curious AI will investigate every possible solution to a problem, even the ones that we're not really we don't really like the sound of. It's the same as it's same as disruptive innovation. A lot of people are very uncomfortable with disruptive innovation. They don't like things that are outside of the box, too far outside of the box. And that's the thing that maximally curious AI will do. It will find things that are outside of the box and present us with those things. They don't necessarily need to implement those things, but they will present us with these things, these ideas that are so far out there and be so against the status quo, because that's where we need to go. We need to go against the status quo to really get to the solutions, because we've tried the status quo for the longest time, and we do not get the solutions when we maintain the status quo. We need to go beyond that. So maximally curious AI may get us there. So I applaud this initiative. We need maximally curious AI, and we need AI to go beyond what we can think. We can't shackle AI to, the th to our norms, to our legal legalities. We can't shackle it to our society. We have to let it go beyond our society so that it can give us the solutions that we haven't been able to figure out or we're too afraid to implement, to think about, too afraid to think about. So what else is going on? Well, Apple, of course, is finally getting into the Apple GP is getting into the game. You know, I was saying this before. So when Apple Vision Pro came out, I said to myself, you know, it's great that Apple is talking about all these things, all these great new things that are not AI. But even though there are there's AI in it, they're not shouting about AI. They're not talking about AI. They're not saying AI is everything. And now they've succumbed. That's right, folks. Apple has succumbed. I'm surprised to say that Apple has succumbed. But Apple, you can't say that Apple is not a company that listens to its customers and then brings those things out. I know initially Steve Jobs said, no, don't listen to your customers. I'm just going to do this thing. But nowadays, if there's enough pressure on these companies, and there is a lot of pressure. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure from shareholders. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure from the board. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure from customers going, AI, uh, Apple, what's going on? Where is your AI strategy? What are you doing in this AI space? There's OpenAI, there's Meta, there's Google. All these other tech companies are doing something in the AI space. What are you doing? So they finally announced that they're going to be coming out with Apple GPT. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. A version of GPT with Apple stuff in it. Will it be any better than anything else we've seen? I don't know. Possibly, possibly not. Who knows? What's next on the list? AI influencers. That's right, folks. You know, it's not enough that we already have people going insane online trying to bring in eyeballs. I mean, this is what it is. I mean, I would never want to be, I mean, you hear about the kid, these kids nowadays who want to be influencers when they grow up. And I'm thinking to myself, that is the absolute opposite of what I want to be when I grow up. I don't want to be in someone who needs to create content 24-7 because the moment I stop creating content, it stop, I stop getting paid. And if you think about it, this is all the way back to the whole rich dad, poor dad concept where the rich dad created passive income through all these old school methodologies like rental or dividend stocks. But nowadays we have new school passive income methodologies which are out there, but this is not any of them. See what being an AI, an influencer is, an influencer is being out there 24 7 generating content because the moment you stop generating content people forget about you that's it you're done you're out the door and it's way worse than say being an actor or a musician in the world because you have to constantly be creating content once you stop creating content you are forgotten about so what's going to happen what is happening is that AI influencers are being created to generate const content constantly. 
So even those people who aspire to become YouTube influencers are going to be cut out by these AI influencers. So if you think about it, that's one of those things that will eventually disappear. See, this is one of the things I talk about. I talk about this with jobs, is that one of the problems with AI is that people be feel that jobs will disappear with AI. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Yes, jobs will disappear with AI. That's absolutely true. That is definitely going to happen. However, the only jobs that should be disappearing with AI is the jobs that people shouldn't be doing anyway. If your job can be replaced by AI, then it probably should be replaced by AI, and you should be doing something better, something more human. AI should replace the inhuman jobs so that we can have more human jobs. So if you ask me, I welcome AI influencers because AI influencers will save those regular human influencers from spending 724 online creating content, just sucking people in for eyeballs and money. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.